Hello everyone, this is Robert, this is my Prusa XL, and in this video we're going to be talking about multi-material printing. That's the thing that everyone has been wanting me to talk about and I've been wanting to figure out for this printer. As you can see, I've done a lot of testing with this and I think I've mostly figured out printing PLA and TPU together, which is kind of the goal. So in this video, I'm going to cover all the little tips and tricks and all the little things I've learned. It's fairly straightforward, but there's a couple things that you might want to know, so stay tuned. Um, check out the chapter listings below, skip around, do what you got to do. Let's dive right into it. One of my main goals for buying the XL was to print dissimilar materials together. So TPU and PLA was kind of one of the first things I wanted to test out, and that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. Uh, I wanted to see kind of what the process looked like. I wanted to see what it looked like from SolidWorks to the slicer, to the machine, post-processing, all that good stuff. That's what we're going to cover in this video. Here is the test part in question. This is a bearing and the black is TPU and the yellow is PLA and they are printed in one piece. These don't come apart. They're kind of uh, internally fused together. We'll get into the geometry later. And as you can see, this was not the first print. It wasn't successful in the first go. However, this is everything that you're seeing. I had some issues printing the TPU. I'll explain why that was kind of challenging later on in the video. But yeah, this part serves no purpose. It was just kind of a bearing that I grabbed out of the parts bin and just something I could use to kind of test this out and see, you know, what the process looked like. So let's dive in a little bit closer and I'll show you what this part actually looks like. And then we'll go through the progression of what it takes to do in SolidWorks, how we do it in the slicer, the little tips and tricks I've learned along the way, and how we get to this finished part. So here is our assembly in SOLIDWORKS. It's comprised of two pieces. We've got this inside spider, and then we have the outside holder. Once again, this is pretty arbitrary because I'm just kind of making these things up. This isn't for any specific application. But I did want to point out if we um, hide this outside holder, you can see that I do have some three-dimensional geometry in here. This isn't just a 2D thing that just kind of presses down in. We could just you know, print those in two separate pieces and press them together. So this actually does have some geometry on the inside. And then you can kind of see how it's being held in there. So this is kind of the first gotcha that I want to say is you do have to design all this geometry yourself. Uh, Cura does have like some interface features to where it can actually create interfaces to where it's kind of blending the two materials together and giving you these interfaces. However, with Prusa Slicer, at least today in making this video, you have to design these interfaces yourself. So just something to take into consideration. You might be able to bring this into Cura and export it and do other stuff. That's beyond the scope of this video. I haven't tried that. So you're just gonna have to figure out what your application is and what that interface is going to look like. So for me, I'm creating this as two separate pieces, right? I've got the internal spider, the outside holder, and what we do is instead of saving these separately, we're going to actually save these together as one file when we bring it into Prusa Slicer. And we do this by doing save as, and instead of saving it as an STL as we would normally do, we save this as a 3MF. So when we save this as a 3MF, that will actually save both of these so that when we bring it into the slicer, it will see these as two distinct parts, and then we can just set which extruder we're using for which, which is pretty cool. So here we are inside Prusa Slicer, and if we look over here on the side, you can see that I have my uh, print settings selected. In the first extruder, I have my TPU, and then the second one, I have PLA. I've got the printer selected, we're all good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add item. We're gonna load this bearing assembly, and it's gonna have this pop-up that says, the file has multiple objects in it. Do we wanna load this as a single object with multiple parts? Yes, we do. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down and then move it over here just for grins. And we can see that we have two different bodies. We have the outside body and then we have the inside body, nice and simple. 
and then we can assign these to different extruders. And so we want the inside to be our TPU, that's extruder one. So we're gonna select that body, right click here, change extruder to one. And then up here, we're gonna change this to extruder two. Pretty much as simple as that. We could just go ahead and slice this and print. But here's the issue that I ran into. If we look at print settings, we see that perimeters are 65, infills 200, solid infills 100. These speeds are way, way too fast for TPU. They're perfectly fine for PLA, but they will not work for TPU. This is way too fast. So we need to slow this down. So what I end up doing is printing this out and slowing it down, just kind of changing the feed rate. But then the PLA really didn't print very well because we're printing it way, way, way too slow and it was kind of stringy and gummy. So we need a way to choose different print speeds for both of the extruders. And currently right now in Prusa Slicer, there's no way to do this. I can't change the extruder. We have like multiple extruder settings here, but for the speed, I really don't have that option. So what we kind of have to do is trick it. So what I end up doing is we'll select our TPU We'll go into filament settings, and if we click on advanced, we can actually lower the volumetric speed. And what this will do is it'll make sure that we never go over this volumetric speed. Now, I just chose two because this is crazy slow, and it ended up working out perfectly fine for TPU. But usually you'll print PLA, what, at like 20, 25, something like that. Doesn't matter. But for TPU, I wanted to go really low. And this is fascinating because when it prints, it will print the PLA perfectly fine. It'll print it fast. And then as soon as it switches over to the TPU, it will print it slow. So we really need to mess with the max volumetric speed for the different materials to make sure that they print at their respective correct speeds. So that's a little gotcha that I learned. The other thing that I learned is when we look at the physical printer here, We've got the 0.6 nozzle. From what I'm seeing right now, there's no way to choose, like if I wanna do the inside at a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and then do the outside at a 0.1 millimeter nozzle, there's no way to do that. We have to actually select the machine with the nozzle and it assumes that all the nozzles on all the extruders are the same. Hopefully this will change. I'm going to look for a way to kind of get around this, but I really want to do maybe these outside perimeters with a really massive nozzle, or I guess the opposite. I'd want to do the outside with a small nozzle and then the inside with a big fat nozzle. And for right now, I can't see there is a way of doing that. So just something to take into account. But the biggest takeaway from this is you're going to need to mess with the volumetric speeds to make sure that you're printing at the appropriate speed for the appropriate material. So let's take a closer look at each one of these. So this was the very, very first one that I ever did. And you can see it's kinda, you know, nasty, just typical TPU crap. Now this one was interesting because I actually didn't add the 3D geometry in here. So this one kind of comes out a little bit. And I did this because I wanted to see what the layer bonding looked like. I wanted to see if these filaments would actually melt into each other. And sure enough, PLA and TPU does not really bond. It's actually a little bit, I haven't pulled this all the way out. It's a little tricky to get this out. There's some bonding, but it's not really actually melted in. But let's see what the actual outside layers look like. <laughs> Outside layers look about as good as you would ever want or expect from TPU. And there's a little bit of bonding happening here, but yeah, just kind of an interesting concept. But yeah, you can see that the TPU printed really terribly. So then I kind of moved on to some more tests trying to get this working right. The other thing I also didn't mention is my TPU was printing way too hot. Um, I had it at 240, 250, which is pretty standard, but for the TPU I have, this was way too hot. You can also see here that you're getting some of the embedded in there. You can always tell where the prime tower is because prime tower was back here, so it was stringing back to the prime tower and leaving all this gunk in there. So yeah, doing a lot of testing with these and then finally ended up with the final one, which is this, which you can 
obviously tell is beautiful. This one looks really, really nice. This is the bottom layer. I'm using the um, kind of satin build plate and it looks really good. The transition in between the two, you cannot feel it. It is perfectly seamless in between them. And then here's the top layer. Still looks very, very good, but just a little bit of stringing in between the layers. So let's take this one step further and actually look at this under magnification. What I'm hoping to see is the transition between the two materials. And that's what it looks like. I'm gonna try and point here. <laughs> this is very small. So yeah, the transition between the TPU and the PLA is actually really, really good. You can see a tiny bit of stringing up here. Whoa. And you can see a little bit of blobbing, but generally speaking, that transition between the two materials looks really, really good. I, I don't know what I was expecting to see, but maybe I was thinking that you'd see some gaps. Um, you'd maybe see some overlap to where, you know, like little squiggles where the material was kind of pushing the other material out of the way. But overall, I mean, that's about as good as it gets for not only a first layer, but also the transition in between the two. So that is, yeah, pretty impressive. I'm, I'm overall pretty impressed with how it can change the extruder and then still be dead on right next to it. I mean, you know, if these layers were the same color, they would effectively be right over top of each other. So yeah, really happy with that. One of the questions that I got a lot of was how much waste is there in printing? And obviously people are kind of comparing this to bamboo. And this is the amount of waste. This is the entirety of the wipe tower for this part. And the interesting thing is the wipe tower is going to be consistent, I guess, for every print because it needs the same amount for every layer change and it only changes once per layer. So for a 10 millimeter tall print, I don't know if you can see that. Well, tilting it. It's 1.4 grams, 1.3, 1.4 grams. So you're about 0.14 grams per millimeter height on your print is the waste. And it does show you this in the slicer. It only shows this in terms of um, length of material, but if you do have the costing in there, it'll tell you how much the cost is for the uh, wipe tower. But this should be pretty proportional depending on how high you go. It does add a little bit more structure when you start getting really, really tall. And I'm sure once you add like five extruders and you're doing five different filaments, this gets a little bit bigger, but it's fairly negligible. You're talking about one gram worth of filament for this entire print. I mean, this thing is, you know, it's basically hollow. So I think it calculated it at about five cents, you know, something like that. So the amount of um, filament waste is basically negligible and you can test this out. You can look at the Prusa slicer, you can add your own wipe tower to your own parts and you can see exactly how big it is and how much filament there is, but it's very, very minor. Okay, so let's recap everything. So what you wanna do is in your design program, Fusion 360 SolidWorks, you're going to create the separate bodies or these separate parts. You're going to save those as an assembly that will be saved as a 3MF. You will need to create your own interfaces between these two different parts. Uh, the slicer, at least today, is not going to do that for you. So you need to create those interfaces. You're gonna save as a 3MF, bring that into Prusa Slicer, and then from Prusa Slicer, it's gonna import them as multiple solid bodies as one object. And then you select the bodies, select which extruder you're going to use on those bodies. That will determine the filament that you're gonna use. For the filament settings, you need to make sure that the volumetric flow is appropriate for the specific material. And I'm probably gonna go off on a little tangent here, right here. Um, this is something that we need to do a little bit more of. Like in machining, we're always talking about material removal rate or things like that. The RPM is really not that interesting. The feed rate isn't that interesting. There's the depth of cut, the width of cut, what cut are you using, how many flutes. 
we tend to refer to things as material removal rates because that is all of these factors combined. And I think looking at this as volumetric flow is the thing to talk about as well. I got some criticism in one of the first videos because I compared a 0.6 to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and people were like, oh, they're completely different. It's printing the same amount of material in the same amount of time. That's kind of what I'm getting at. The amount of layers and the height of the layers, all that's relatively irrelevant. If you're trying to hit the fastest print possible, you need to look at this from terms of how much material you're spitting, spitting out. The nozzle size really is pretty irrelevant. So you're going to be always up against that maximum volumetric flow rate of the filament. So you need to be setting that which is appropriate for the filament. Um, beyond that, if everything is pretty straightforward, um, one of the biggest issues I had with this print was the TPU and I had the wrong settings. Um, you see the filament dryers over here. I kind of dried it a little bit, but then when I started printing it directly from the dryer after letting it sit for 24 hours, that's when everything started kind of clicking and then I realized it was stringing too much, lower the temperature and all was good. These are all my issues. They're not really Prusa Slicer issues. I've always kind of had issues with the TPU that I have. Maybe I should just get some better TPU. But anyway, once you get uh, all of the filament settings properly, it's pretty straightforward. Um, TPU is kind of one of the more challenging things to print. Maybe I'll try printing I don't know, like a PLA and a nylon together or something, but really I don't see any issues with that because it's really just a temperature gradient between the two and pretty much everything sticks to these print beds. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty happy with the testing that I've done so far. I feel confident that I can introduce this into a new design. The next step for me is to test soluble supports. And I have some PVA somewhere on the other side of the camera out there. That is going to be my next step. I have a part that I've been designing for work that has kind of an overhang and it looks really ugly on the underside with traditional support. So I want to try PVA water soluble supports. That is my next step. So that's going to be my next video. Hopefully you learned something from this. I have no issue with the tool head being able to do exactly what I and many others wanted it to do is printing dissimilar materials together just a couple little things you have to take note of. I really do want to see in the future the ability to choose two completely different nozzles because a one millimeter and a 0.4 are going to print at different widths. You're always going to have to have the same layer height, but I like that idea of maybe a one millimeter nozzle for super fast infill and then maybe a 0.4 on the outside for more fine detail. I don't know. It's kind of interesting stuff. There might be a trick to do it in Slicer. I don't know what that is right now. I'm rambling at this point. Thanks for watching. Check the links down below. I don't know if there's even going to be any. Watch the other Prusa videos and I'll be back in the next video talking about how this thing handles water soluble supports. Thanks for watching. Bye.